Hello everybody, my name is Charlie Ellington. I'm the Director of Feed Sales here at Heritage Cooperative. Uh, and today I'm with Dave Hamrick, uh, one of our nutritional consultants. And we're here today to talk about uh, cow herd supplementation. Uh, I know in a previous video, we talked a little bit about mineral programs and the different types of mineral. Well, today we're gonna talk about further supplementation of that. So, um, you know, Dave, there's a lot of options on, on herd supplementations. And, you know, today we wanna cover yeah. um, quite a few of them. Right. And, and I mean, you have cattle yourself. Yeah. Um, cattle. What yeah. are some of the things you think about when you think of supplementation, the cow herd, and, and where you're gonna go with that as, as you feel it's needed? Basically, uh, we're cow-calf operations, so we've got uh, cows, and that's where I really think of body condition scores that we need to really achieve. So feeding some additional energy and protein uh, and the options that we have with the, a Purina product called uh, Accuration High Fat Tubs and or the 3013 tubs uh, come in handy to achieve those, you know, body condition scores. You know, we're actually looking for a, a uh, body condition score of, of six is, is ideal. And, you know, when those conditions uh, deteriorate, especially the last uh, trimester of uh, gestation in the first uh, trimester of lactation, we're looking to uh, increase that protein and energy needs. Some of the products that will help us achieve that are what we've got the, uh, the intake modifying Accuration high fat tub. And that tub is kind of designed really to kind of hit both areas, protein and energy. And the energy portion of that's like a 10% energy uh, in those tubs. Uh, consumption rates are like one to three pounds uh, on a tub. Uh, kind of designed uh, one tub will do uh, 10 to 15 head. And um, the intake modifying technology that's in there is kind of uh, like eating smaller meals more often. Actually, they'll kind of consume more hay uh, or even pasture on this product, which will kind of get you more consumption. Uh, of those products and then better utilization with the uh, uh, NPN that's in there also and the intake modifier. So. so you think about those, I mean, obviously we're talking about supplementation and um, we've probably come to a determination of, okay, we need supplementation. We know, okay, body condition score is going downhill, but before that happens, I mean, is there anything we can do to help customers, um, our, our beef customers and our, our cattle operators, can we help them in different ways to say, hey, look, you're gonna probably need supplementation at a certain time. I mean, are there things we can do to help them with oh, that? yeah, things we can do, you know, I guess what comes to mind first is uh, hay sampling, kind of deciding, you know, whether uh, the nutrients are there. Actually, the, the Accuration tub is kind of designed for if our protein level of the hay is less than 8%, uh, and we've got that ahead of time, we know that before we're going into uh, that last trimester, first lactation, uh, then we can uh, supplement those tubs. We already know that we're below that 8% protein level. So that's that's one thing that comes to mind that you can do uh, for that. Yeah, and I mean, in, in all honesty, these forage quality is kind of probably the key there. I mean, forage is your number yeah. one biggest dollar spent on right. a cow ca calf operation in particular. Mm -hmm. And when we get into supplementation, it's because we need more than what we're just being supplemented. Uh, you know, we, I hear guys every now and then uh, will come into one of the one of the stores and, and they'll say, you know, uh, forage is getting short. I'm running out of hay. I'm running out of pasture. I'm I'm running out of this. So I'm going to supplement a tub. Is that is that exactly what we should be doing? Or, or is that kind of a uh, counterproductive if they're running short on forage. Yeah, yeah, it could be counterproductive if, if we're running short on forage. This is kind of to help supplement that. Uh, so I, I, I guess I'm saying that it's probably a, a part of the solution, but maybe not the whole solution. Yeah, yeah, and I mean you got to understand that he, Dave talked earlier about how these tubs will actually bring up forage consumption uh, a little bit, and that's the design there is that we're feeding the rumen microbes. Um, better nutrients and so what happens is they actually digest faster and so even that poor fa quality forage end up ends up getting digest digested faster right. and so we actually go through more and so we get more energy into them and we maybe get them what they need but it's yeah. not necessarily going to help yeah. us in yeah. um a time when hay is short right, right. i mean it's so not, yeah. we may need to think a little differently when we're doing something like that right. so maybe at that point uh the tubs or even the high fat tubs aren't the exact solution 
Um, so Dave, you know, you talked about the high fat tubs a little bit. Um, where do you see the 3013 tub? I mean, versus a high fat tub, you know, obviously they consume a little bit more of this. Where do you see the 3013 tub fitting in the best? I think the 3013 kind of fits the best where we've already done our hay sampling and we're at least at 8% protein level. Uh, and um, if we're over that uh, 18%, Actually, underneath, under that 18% or 8% protein level is where we'd want to bring the 3013 in. But our body condition scores are at least, you know, five and a half, six. You know, so we've got good condition, uh, but we're just a little short on protein on that. So basically, quality hay. If we don't have that quality of hay, that's where we'd have the 3013 over the Accuration tub where we would be looking at that if our body condition scores are lower. Right, right. So when we get from tubs and, you know, we talked about body condition score, but, you know, tubs aren't for everybody. Uh, right, the, right. The, yeah. yeah. To me, the, the tubs are, you know, probably by far number one convenience. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of beef guys are, well, let's say, it, I mean, most of them are working away, uh, really don't have the time. So, you know, reduced labor and convenience are a big part of, of these tub supplementation. Um, it, especially it's not for the guy that has his own corn or, or some of those things. Uh, it, it's for the guy that really is looking for that convenience. Doesn't, doesn't have the feed stuffs on farm is where we're looking at these tubs working. Yeah. Yeah. And I would agree with you. I mean, by all means, it is the most convenient for people like you and I that work away. Uh, you put it out there enough for the number of head that you yeah. have and yeah. hey it's it it's pretty simple and and it works well yeah. um i i like also the fact that i don't care whether it's the high fat tub or, or the um 30 13 or regular protein tub, protein tub the bottom line is they pretty much eat to their needs for the most part right. like you right. said yeah. forage quality yeah. Yeah. Will, you'll see it uh fluctuate throughout the year even if it's just pasture not necessarily even hay yeah. quality yeah. but even just pasture it will allow that to fluctuate right. Um, those intakes and I, and, I, and the convenience yeah. is, is right. really fantastic on these. Yeah, and there, there's a lot of tubs out there on the market. I mean, uh, but what kind of makes these tubs shine is that low moisture uh, cooked process tub, which they've really got a handle on consumption rates. And that's kind of where uh, those Perina tubs work uh, very well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and so when we move from there, I mean, one of the thoughts that I go to is, okay, um, I've, I've worked with a couple of producers where um, lots of cattle, lots of pastures all over the place. And the bottom line is that we can't always see those every group of cattle every single day or whatever the case may be, especially on stockpile grasses and different things like that. And, you know, one group or something slips out. And, and, and when we look at their body condition score, they're, they're on the lower end. I mean, they're, it's going to be pushing it with our hay qualities to even utilize right. a couple of these products and, and when we get to that point you know to me there's a few options obviously we can go to some additional technology type feeds um, which would go along the accuration line to like a range supplement which is a super high fat super high protein um, more of a granular feed and we can blend that either with corn and or straight depending on what we think the intake and the energy needs are mm -hmm. um, and feed those of those cattle, whether they be in a, um, I'm going to call it creep feeder or steer stuffer situation. Um, obviously the creep panels aren't going to be down if we're trying to supplement cows, but um, you know, we get into a situation like that. That's where we need more energy. We need right. more supplementation than what they're going to be able to consume here. Yeah. Yeah. You know um, from there, where do we go? What if we need even more than that? What, what, I mean, so, you know, you, you know, some options might be, you know, whole shell corn or shell corn and, and corn gluten uh, as a couple of options that come to mind far as if we're talking about more pounders that we need based on body condition and, and if we need to get there. Um, both of them all require more equipment uh, and more time and labor to get to those, but it, it kind of is dictated by the body condition score of your cattle. Yeah, we're going to end up on those a lot more labor intensive. Hand yeah, fed. Yeah, a lot more labor I mean, intensive. Yeah. yeah. A hand feeding situations. Uh, 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 so th those, those things kind of go up uh, when you get into those situations, but may be dictated, um, you know, really by body condition scores, hay quality, and your on farm feed stuffs. And so, you know, we talked about shelled corn, you talked about 
Uh, I think you may have mentioned some of the different byproducts. So, you know, there are some options there where we look at um, corn, soybean hull pellets or soybean hulls, gluten, mm -hmm. um, maybe even distillers in or certain areas. Or um, but th those different byproducts. So, if I'm a producer and I'm saying, okay, that's, the, that's where I've got to go. That's where you and I have talked about mm -hmm. uh, as a consultant to producer. We've talked about this is what I need. Um, what are some of the things I need to be watching for as a producer to be making sure that um, I don't miss anything supplementation wise with those hand fed? Well, with products? those hand fed, I mean, you talked about the ingredients there. I'm not sure we talked about, you know, vitamin and mineral supplementation in there. Uh, so there, there are several products, um, you know, that come to mind that we can use to, you know, kind of formulate a complete type diet uh, for them in that situation. And you're already going through the process of, of putting commodities and corn together, um, you could bring in a balancer pellet or, or you know, uh, or a formulator type mineral products or things like that to kind of so that we got a total total mix ration. Then. Yeah. So that would be more like a complete feed, you know, something like we yeah. offer, yeah. Um, you know, even pre-bagged, we've got some different completes that yeah. are ready to go, yeah. uh, hand-fed supplements, yeah. not just the basic commodities. Right. Several options in the heritage brand. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But even on those just base commodity rations, you know, the one thing I think about is uh, making sure that we still have that mineral supplementation. You know, I, we, obviously Tommy and I talked right. about minerals earlier right. uh, on a different video. I want to make sure that those cows don't, you know, this time of year in particular, you know, they're producing the embryo that, that we're going to breed, right? You know, 90, 30, 60, 90 days right. Um, right. prior to yeah. our, um, uh, when we actually, actually when we actually to, have them bred, yeah, have the animal bred, the bulls, uh, whether yeah. it be AI or bull bred. Right. Um, so we need to make sure that we're still supplying the right amount of minerals. Right, right. And, and yep. when you get into yep. those byproducts, uh, yep. you know, one of the first things I think about is, is, is phosphorus. Okay. Uh, and, and when uh, those, all those byproducts, corn, gluten, any, corn, any corn-based byproducts really high in phosphorus. High in phosphorus. So what do we need to be watching for there? We talk about it all the time. To me, we really got to pay attention to consumption rates on mineral. You know, our target rate is four ounces per head per day. And if those typically go, if they go down, then we got probably high phosphorus levels in our grains, which going back is another option to putting mineral in the feed. We can have free choice mineral out there also. Or one or the other, not both. Right. Uh, so, um, to me, the good thing with the free choice mineral piece to that is that the bottom line is the cow will typically consume to what they need on a phosphorus right. and salt level. Right. So, as long as we're supplying enough, they're going to eat to their needs. So they may not touch that mineral feeder, and that's okay as long as we know they're getting enough, enough. elsewhere. elsewhere. Yeah. Uh, and then even yeah. with these, I mean, if a guy is supplementing with the, with the tub minerals, to me. Leave your free choice mineral out there. Leave mm -hmm. if they don't eat it, that's okay. Let's talk yeah. about the minerals yeah. that are in here. Yeah, um, you can leave it out there. Not really necessary, but right. you can leave it out there. Right, exactly. To make yeah. it even even more simple. Yeah, right. so that makes the convenience here even right. even better. Yeah. Yes. So, so you're a cattle producer. You I mean you you've been in the industry for a long time. Um, what's some tips and tricks when it comes to cattle supplementation? Just things you do annually or um, whatever, every few months, whatever, to make sure that your cows are staying in the best body condition. You don't need any supplementation and or when you do, what are some things that you do to, mm -hmm. to yeah. help those cows out? Well, typically, you know, kind of, to me, it kind of starts in the spring, really. It, it's hay production. You know, knowing when we start making hay, do we make quality first cutting hay or are we in one of those years that we're not getting first cutting hay made until uh, the end of June or 1st of July. So that's kind of the first indicator how we're going to be ending up in the fall and winter. So knowing that as we're going into it, if we're in a good production year, then we maybe we know that we've got our protein needs taken care of. And then, you know, once we get into those time frames, at, if that's the situation, uh, based on body condition then is where we would supplement maybe some grain uh, set up for that. So, uh, and it based basically off of body condition. Now, if, if the, the year is where we know we've got poor quality hay, then we may be doing some things sooner uh, in the fall, you know, to, you know, uh, pasture rotation, making sure we got good body conditions going in, uh, into fall and winter. Uh, so, 
that might be a, a thing that, you know, it's a variable kind of based on our hay production. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously, the idea, you know, in a, in a perfect world, at least for me, a cow-calf operator would have free choice mineral and either yeah. pasture or, or quality hay. Right, right. Um, yeah. And the cows would stay right. in great right. condition. Yeah. Calves would wean at the weights that we want. Ideal situation. Ideal. Yeah. Let's face it, we're, we're obviously in Ohio. Yeah, uh, yeah. We never have a variable ideal situations. We got, we, you know, that's why we got a lot of products for a lot of variable situations. Right. Uh, so right yeah. right and I mean I just think that um, the key here to me is, is just selecting that right mm -hmm. need and and not maybe selecting it too late managing to the point where we're selecting that need at the right time I mean right. we, we can right. save ourselves a lot of money if we select a supplementation program earlier rather than later earlier would you not agree? Yeah. agree yes yes agree yep yep be prepared for what's to come yes. yeah yeah and i think that that helps with some of the services that we can provide uh forage sampling um and then actually bringing back what from our cow program what right. basically that forage will um sustain. supplement or sustain, sustain. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah do we need supplementation and then from there how much supplementation right, right. um yeah. And those are all things that right. uh and those those sampling I mean you can do those samplings, you know, you know, month after harvest. So I mean you you got plenty of time to plan uh for that fall and, and early winter. So the other thing yeah. I see a lot is obviously guys maybe have a hay barn, something like that, and they're making all their first cutting hay and they jam that in that hay barn and then the second and then third and then the fourth. And how do we typically feed it out? Yeah, from front to back. <laughs> so, so yeah, and that just goes goes along with the planning part. I mean, right. you you've got to rotate those. Really, how we do it, we kind of have you know five or six options and accessible to those five or six options. Uh, so you know you're not stacking you know that first stuff in the back and the last stuff that came in. You know, so that you're not feeding the first cutting when you don't need to be or second cutting when you don't need to be. So no, having it variable so that you can choose what you uh, what you need to feed at what time. Yeah, and I mean, let's face it, if we've got poor quality first cutting, but really good fourth cutting, we might be able to blend those and, blend those, and yep. avoid supplementation yep. altogether. Yep, yep. So, and, and, and by doing that, and as you get started and everything, I mean, as, as your body conditions maintain and hold, then maybe we don't. But as they, as they come down, really the kind of the key is really paying attention to the body condition because it can change quickly. My goal always was is if I could get a guy to feed mineral four ounces a day, 365 days a year, uh, is is our goal. I mean, yeah, and make high quality forage. Right. Not high. It doesn't even have, uh, it make quality enough forage to maintain those right. cows to right. make sure yeah. that we don't really need any additional supplementation. Um, you know, that's that's where it's at. I mean, yeah. that's where at the end of the day, it's profitability for the producer. Right. Um, yeah. You know, we're a feed company. Sure, we'd love to. I, I'd yeah. love to yeah. sell feed to everybody, right. right? But yeah, they're all they're all tools in the toolbox. That's right. what they are. Bring out which one you need when you need to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree, and and, and yeah. that's that's the key. And I think when you really sit there and you talk to all of our consultants uh, on the beef front, the key is making sure that we give you the right tools to add to the profitability and the success of your operation. Yeah. So if it just means mineral and feeding the right hay at the right time, great. We'd lo love to help you with that right. situation right. and help you manage through that. Um, and of course, supply your mineral needs. Um, if that means that, hey, we didn't make as good a quality feed this year, you know, right. here's where the supplementation right. comes from. And so I think probably the, the biggest take home for me is, is that there are people like us out here, uh, in particular more in your role, that consult every day on farm, at the farm gate, on how to work through these situations. Right. Uh, and here at Heritage, we have a, a great team, um, and we can help you through each and every one of those processes um, right. and get you the right supplementation that you need, whether it's protein tub right. to high fat tub to maybe AccuRation, either no corn or with corn, supplementation free choice, all the way to hand fed products, whether it be just straight. Basically, that we hit all the right supplementation needs for, for the individual animal and the individual producer. Basically, indiv individualized solutions for each and every operation that's out there. Right. And I mean, yep. that's why we yep. 
commit the money here at Heritage to having a team on the road that, right. that will help our producers through right. those situations. And the, and the many varied products that we have. I mean, uh, and they're all different situations. Mm -hmm. seems like we've got a, a, a mountain of products, but it, it is for a lot of different situations. Uh, really no better time than now. Uh, to take advantage of uh, pricing. We, we do a booking, uh, have for probably 20 years that I know of, uh, on tubs and mineral. And we are going through that right at the moment. And uh, actually a couple of these tubs right here are actually on that booking. No better time to buy it now uh, based on price uh, with the tubs and loose mineral. Uh, we've got a booking going on now till March 22nd. Uh, is the booking and then uh, pickup time I believe is April 19th uh, so uh, if you could get the orders in yeah any heritage store um, any of your consultants basically yep, any yep. of the sales team, the sales team by all means contact any of us we'll be glad to help you make sure that you get the right product one but then also get it booked at the right price uh, you know Purina has, has offered out some discounts in order for us to offer that to you so we're glad to partner with them again on uh, both the tubs and the loose mineral. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, with that, I, I think we thank everybody for their time. Yeah, yeah. Um, thank you and for your time and business. By all means, questions, concerns, comments, reach out to your local Heritage sales representative. We'd be glad to help you out. So thank you. Yep, yep. thank you.